tentacles reached far back into the last century. But it wasn't until victories in Europe and Japan and the onset of the Cold War that political and economic conditions became perfect for actual execution. A conspiracy bigger and more secret than the Manhattan Project. More odious and far-reaching. No sooner had we defeated Germany than a new threat started appearing in skies over America, drawn to Earth by the latest threat to extinction, the H-bomb. Explosions acting as transducers, drawing alien life forms through wormholes in spaceships using electrogravitic propulsion. Advanced extraterrestrial species visiting us, concerned for mankind and the threat of our self-destruction, forestalling our annihilation through their own self-sacrifice in crashes at Roswell, more importantly, places like Aztec. World leaders signed secret memos directing scientific studies of alien technology and biochemistry. Classified studies were done at military installations S-4, Groom Lake, Wright-Patterson, and Dulce. Extracting alien tissue, tests were done on unsuspecting human subjects, and elaborately staged abductions in craft using alien technology recovered from the down saucers. <laughs> including human hybridization through gene editing and forced implantation of alien embryos. Why do such a thing and lie about it? Our own government. Your own government lies as a matter of course, as a matter of policy. The Tuskegee experiments on black men in the 30s, Henrietta Lacks. What are they trying to do? That's the missing piece. But it's not hard to imagine. A government hiding, hoarding alien technology for 70 years at the expense of human life and the future of the planet driven not only by corporate greed, but a darker objective. The takeover of America. And then the world itself, by any means necessary, however violent, or cruel, or efficient. By severe drought, brought on by weather wars, conducted secretly using aerial contaminants and high altitude electromagnetic waves. In a state of perpetual war, to create problem, reaction, solution scenarios to distract, enrage, and enslave American citizens at home with tools like the Patriot Act and the National Defense Authorization Act, which abridge the Constitution in the name of national security. The militarization of police forces in cities across the U.S., the building of prison camps by the Federal Emergency Management Agency with no stated purpose, the corporate takeover of food and agriculture, pharmaceuticals and healthcare, even the military in clandestine agendas to fatten, dull, sicken, and control a populace already consumed by consumerism. And I encourage you all to go shopping more. A government that taps your phone, collects your data, and monitors your whereabouts with impunity. A government preparing to use that data against you when it strikes. And the final takeover begins. The takeover of America. By a well-oiled and well-armed multinational group of elites that will cull, kill, and subjugate. Happening as we sit here. It's happening all around us. The other shoe waiting to drop. It'll probably start on a Friday. The banks will announce a security action necessitating their computers to go offline all weekend. Digital money will disappear. They can just steal your money? Followed by the detonation of strategic electromagnetic pulse bombs to knock out major grids. What well, will seem like an attack on America by terrorists or Russia. Or a simulated alien invasion using alien replica vehicles that exist and are already in use. An alien invasion of the U.S. The Russians tried it in 47. You can't say these things. I'm going to say them tomorrow. It's fear-mongering, claptrap, isolationist, techno-paranoia, so bogus and dangerous and stupid that it borders on treason. Saying these things would be incredibly irresponsible. It's irresponsible not to say it. Especially if it's the truth.